to eternal life church of God and it's a great privilege that we are here gathered together in this beautiful Sunday to come closer and worship his name. Amen. With God's grace till today we have been kept safe. With his grace we have been provided everything that we needed and we are able to see this day. Hallelujah. So praise God for that. And let us all stand together and read Psalms 1. This is the time that I'm taking five minutes to just read Psalms 1 and go through, exalt him. Hallelujah. So the, the, the verses are here on the screen, so it's easy for you to look together and let's all read. Or verse by verse, we can read it out loud. So I'll read the first verse and then we can repeat it like that, right? Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But the Lord and the law He shall be like a tree planted by the river of water that brings forth its fruit in its session, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteousness. The last verse, let's all read together. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Hallelujah. You may be please seated. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's look at the stamps very quickly. And uh, I know today is Youth Sunday also, so we'll very quickly go through this encouragement, verse of encouragement here. And um, the, the, the first verse itself, Blessed is the man who walks in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. You know, here the writer begins his psalms or exalting the joy of obeying God and refusing to listen to those who discredit or ridicule him. Our friends and associates can have a great influence on each one of us. I remember when I was growing up also, my, <laughs> my mother, my parents, mostly my mother, I was in a boarding school, but uh, when, when, we, when I was in fifth standard onwards, we have came back from boarding into school. And there, what I have noticed is, um, sorry, this mic is going in and out, right? I'll, All right, this is better? Yes. All right, much better. Okay, so there, I remember, I mean, even for us also, the parents, as a, uh, we, we used to hear that, you know, be careful who your friend circle is, right? I mean, I keep, I keep telling my son also the same thing. We keep an eye on who his friend circle is. So, blessed, as a Sam says here, blessed is the man who walks not on the counsel of ungodly. Who gives you the counsel? Sometimes it's the people around you. Sometimes it's your friend. Sometimes it's the influencing people around you. You know, so you got to watch out who your counsel is coming from also. And if, uh, you know, if we insist on friendship with those who mock what God considers important, then we are also sinning and becoming indifferent in God's will. So this attitude is the same as mocking itself. So we got to watch out who or whose counsel we are in. And we need to know that the friendship that we are building is building up is it building up our faith or is it actually demoralizing us and pulling us away from faith so that's just a word of warning there how beautiful it is to begin the entire book of sam sam's one with the warning label itself be watchful of who your friend circle is be watchful of who you associate with and blessed is a man who do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Amen. Let's move on to verse number two also. You can see that um, you can learn how to follow God by thinking about his words, meditating day in and night. We all practice that. Right? We all read the Bible. But do we spend quiet time in his presence understanding what the word is? Do we ask help from Holy Spirit to, to, to know what it means? Here the psalmist is saying that he meditates it day and night. It's like breathing for him. Um, this means that spending time reading and thinking about what you have read. And it also means asking yourself how you should change so you're living 
as God wants you to live. Knowing and thinking about God's word are the first step and towards applying it in your everyday life. Hallelujah. Now the law is tricky. The law means, in, especially in this context, or uh, in fact, in all of the scriptures, when the law, when we when we say the law, it means the entire law, not the whole book, not the whole truth here. And the first five books of Moses and whatever the prophets have said also, that and all the other writings is included in the law. The more we know the whole scope of God's, God's words, um, the, the more resources we will have to use and the guide that will provide to us for our daily decision making. We ask in the presence of Holy Spirit for every small or big actions that we take that is this word God wants us. Am I following God's will and am I walking abiding by the law here? Moving on to verse number three also, uh, so, uh, there is a simple wisdom. I mean, we, you can connect these two verses together. There's a simple thing that is said there. The more we delight in obeying God, the more fruitful we are. Hallelujah. The more we take pleasure in obeying God and practicing it daily, the more fruitful we become um, in implementing it in our life and the more fruitful we are to the kingdom of God. So that's what the psalmist is reminding us. He shall be like a tree planted by the river of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf, leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. I think it is also referenced in uh, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 and 8, uh, speaks so also. Let me just pull that up. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 and 8. Um, Hallelujah. So when you are planted by the river, see how deep rooted your roots are and you, you are you are like absorbing the water from the river and producing more and more fluid. So it's a, it's a continuous flow process. So understand where you are planted. Are you planted by the river? Are you planted on solid surface where you are producing more and more fruit? So that's what the psalmist is again reminding us and he was just quoting Jeremiah again, the God's promise to watch over them. And God's wisdom guides their life also in the book of Jeremiah as we read it. Now, um, you can, there was one thing that really uh, brings me here is, and whatever he does shall prosper. And whatever he does shall prosper, or in all they do they shall prosper. In some scriptures say, uh, different verses say there. What does that actually mean? Does it actually mean that you have the Midas touch, you touch whatever it will become gold or anything you walk into is always prosperous? No, it doesn't mean that. A child of God's life is not always prosperous as you touch everything it will be all good and everything will be nice like that. No, it doesn't work like that. We all have our own troubles, we all have our own problems and struggles and things that we have to go. But what actually the Bible means by prosperity is when we apply God's wisdom, the fruit or the result by the product or the byproduct of what we are producing, we bear will, whatever we bear will be good and receive God's approval upon it just as a tree soaking up water and bearing fruits and being fruitful to it so don't get misunderstood that there won't be any miseries in your life every Christian life has got their own troubles and problems to go through but irrespective of what you go through whatever you do you have God's approval because you took care of initial two three things one not walk in the counsel of the ungodly two meditate his words day and night and three you are seeking guidance to understand what the word of God is saying and the spirit is Holy Spirit is guiding you in everything and lastly another example that was given as the word shaft there um, the um, verse number three four the ungodly are not so but like the shaft which the wind drives away you know uh, 
to the children smaller children especially uh, who do not understand what a shaf is it's like when you once you harvest the wheat or the rice uh, you come in and you, there was a specific word in english um um drawing a blank here it's called as thorning or something let's see threshing and winnowing threshing and winnowing so when you're threshing the grains it breaks apart and then only you can get to the kernel of it and kernel is what we consume but the outer crust of the rice or wheat or whatever the grain is it still stays there after threshing and it's so light that even the slightest of the wind can take away the shaft away right so the ungodly's life is going to be like that after the threshing happens when you when the farmer or when the whoever is doing the harvesting throws it up the slightest wind removes all the chaff away but the good kernel falls down right there that's what we can consume amen so god is going to see through it and god is going to remove the chaff out of all of us so we got to be watchful that we are not part of that chaff we are not blown away by the slightest wind and we fall in the place now a grain that is falling down grain doesn't have a choice it has to fall down because of gravity but we all who are sitting here we have a choice whether to follow god or not to follow in the end of the day it will all comes down to your personal decision and your wisdom what it applies and where it takes you now the last two verses the ungodly uh, sorry the therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteousness we all know where we will end up we look forward to be in his presence when we finish and not in the uh, judgment area and the sinner is in the congregation of, okay um, for the lord knows that the ways of the righteousness righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish so may god help us all may god bless us all and may our ways not perish but be more and more fruitful to god's kingdom hope these words encourage you thank you very much